So the SNES or Super Nintendo is and probably always will be my favourite console of all time and it's been incredibly difficult to narrow this list down to just 15 games but I have managed to do it with moving a lot of games in and out of this list and I'm very excited to share with you all today my top 15 SNES games of all time. Let me know in the comments below what your top 15 games are too and with that said, let's get started. So in at number 15, this is a game by Quintet, one of my all-time favourite game developers, and this is Act Razor. This is actually their first ever game and they absolutely knocked it out of the park on their first release. This game is a mix of simulation style gameplay with action platforming segments and the two gel together really well. There was also a sequel that came out a few years later called Actraiser 2 but that one did away with the simulation elements of the first game so that is why I prefer this one and it is such a great game too. It's very relaxing in a way. It mixes very difficult platforming with kind of chilled out simulation city building style gameplay as well. There's a whole range of different places to go in the game and different things that you need to do to keep all of your villagers happy so there's loads to sink your teeth into and there was also a remake recently on the Switch and stuff as well so if you do enjoy Actraiser definitely check out the new version too but I absolutely love this game let me know down below if you've played it too. Now for kind of an unusual pick I wasn't sure whether to include this one or not but in the end I thought this one brought me so much joy as a kid and I spent so many hours on this game just creating things. This is Mario Paint and this was a game that used the SNES mouse but to be honest the painting element probably isn't what most kids actually played on this game. There was two things on this game that really stand out for me. They are the music maker and the bug swatting minigame where you have to swat the bugs with a net. It's so fun especially the music maker. I spent hours and hours and hours playing on this as a kid and of course you've probably seen it on YouTube that people went way overboard with this and made some incredible compositions that got really really popular online in the mid 2000s. And Mario Paint is a kind of one-off game from Nintendo. They didn't really make anything else like it since. They made some kind of experimental games on the N64 and you can kind of count Mario Maker as a sort of successor to it but really there is nothing like Mario Paint so if you've got a SNES grab yourself a SNES mouse and a copy of Mario Paint and be prepared to just lose a few hours to just be creative and enjoy yourself with it. It's still really really fun to go back to even today. Now the next game on the list was actually a toss up between two different shooting games. It was either going to be Super Alest or Parodius and in the end although I absolutely love both of these games I could only pick one and the one I ended up going with was Parodius because this is the one that I grew up with and it was such a weird and wacky game and Parodius is honestly the reason why I love shooting games today. If I didn't grow up with this I wouldn't have gone on to check out games like Gradius and eventually ended up at things like Super Alest so it really is thanks to Parodius that my love of shooting games came to be and what a fantastic game it is too. I'm sure you all know by now but if you don't Parodius is a parody of Gradius hence the title and and basically you can choose a range of wacky characters and you go around all these really strange locations and it has the same power up system as Gradius which means that it plays extremely well and this SNES version is just really well programmed too. Of course Parodius has been on a lot of other consoles as well but this is still my favourite way to play the game today. Now going from one wacky game to another this is one of my favourite platformers on the system. This game is Pluck and this was actually made right here in the UK by the Pickford Brothers and I'm still eagerly awaiting their sequel. Come on, where is it? We've been waiting since Plock 64. So this game, for those of you that don't know, is kind of like Rayman. You basically play as this character who can throw his limbs at enemies. But the difference being, in this game, you can actually lose your limbs. So at some parts of the game, you can literally just be bouncing around as a body. And there's kind of a weird thing where after the first few worlds, you end up having to track down these fleas out of eggs, which is kind of out of left field. And it's kind of completely different to the start of the game. But it's such a fantastic game. It's incredibly difficult, but it is the kind of game that you want to go back to and play over and over again to try and get just a little bit better at it. I've talked about it many times in the past, so go ahead and check out my channel. I'm sure if you search Plock in the bar at the top, you can find a few videos that I've done on it over the years, but definitely recommend it if you want a great platformer for the SNES. Okay, another platformer now, but this one is actually a Japan exclusive, 
and absolutely one of my favourite games of all time in one of my favourite series, at least for the first three games, that is Umihara Kawase. This is definitely my favourite game on the Super Famicom. This is another game that I've done a video about in the past. I actually did a retrospective on the entire series, so go ahead and watch that one after this. I'll put it in the description. But basically, for those of you that don't know, this is kind of a puzzle platformer where you use a fishing rod to swing your way around the levels and try and get to the end of the stage. It sounds like a simple concept, but in execution, this game can get extremely challenging and it also has a really high skill ceiling too, which is one of the reasons why I love it so much. You can pull off some crazy stunts in this game once you know how to control it properly. So, highly recommend this game. I don't really recommend any of the newer games in the series, so if you were tempted to go and get the Switch, games after hearing about this. Try and get the one on the Vita or the PSP or the DS. They're probably the best way to go to get the proper Umihara experience and I really do hope that they bring out the original games on the Switch at some point. I really think that people deserve to play the best in the series rather than Fresh and Bazooka which I wasn't a huge fan of honestly. Now how could I have a top games list without including a Mega Man game? There's loads of great Mega Man games on the SNES but the one I always go back to is the original Mega Man X. And yes, unfortunately I don't have a box for this game, I would love to try and upgrade to a boxed copy at some point, but what I do have here is one of the best action platformers of all time. I actually really enjoy X2 as well, but I do think the first one is probably a bit more of a better made game. It's kind of got a bit more thought put into the level design and the layout, and the music's more memorable in this one as well, but you really can't go wrong with any of the Mega Man games on the SNES. Even Rockman Soccer, even that one can be fun, honestly. But yeah, Mega Man X is definitely the highlight of the Mega Man series on this system for me. Now for the first RPG on this list, and I really struggled to decide which one to include as well because there's so many fantastic RPGs on the SNES, from Final Fantasy 3 and 6, two of my favourite games in that series, as well as the Breath of Fire games, but the one I decided to go with is a game called Lufia 2 Rise of the Sinistrals, and this is almost my favourite RPG on the system, not quite because I think we've got two more coming up, maybe three if you count one of them. But the reason that I picked Lufia over those other games is for several reasons. Number one, I think the story in this game is a lot better paced than a lot of the other games on the system. Number two, I really enjoy the dungeon design in this. They don't overstay their welcome, they're full of really inventive puzzles, and they all feel quite unique as well. It also has a great battle system, and the music in particular is just incredible. Apparently it also got a remake on the DS, which I would love to try out at some point, although I've heard that it's not as good as the SNES original. So if you want to try an RPG for the SNES that's a little bit different and kind of obscure compared to a lot of the other picks on the system, then definitely give Lufia 2 a try. You will not be disappointed. Now, I'm kind of cheating for this one, and I don't think I've ever done a top games list where I didn't cheat at least once. I'm including Super Mario All-Stars, and Super Mario World in this, because technically it's not cheating, they did both come on one cartridge. This is the Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World pack that came bundled with the SNES here in the UK. You're basically getting five incredible Mario games all on one cart, and honestly, each of these games are phenomenal in their own right. But when you package them all together, the, you could literally just live off this one game and really not need to worry about playing anything else for the rest of your life. There's so much content in here. All of the games are so well made. There's so many secrets in the levels. Mario 3 is my personal favourite, but I know a lot of people really love Mario World as well. But to get these SNES versions of all of these games on one cartridge is just fantastic. And I really wish that Nintendo would go back and remaster some of their old Mario games for modern systems and kind of do an updated All-Stars collection. I mean, 3D All-Stars came out on the Switch, but they didn't really do anything to those games at all. Nintendo did put a lot more effort into their games back in the SNES days, and it really shows with releases like this. Of course, no Nintendo list is complete without a Zelda game. How could I not include Link to the Past? Quite possibly the best 2D Zelda game there is. It's kind of arguable whether Link to the Past or Link's Awakening is the perfect 2D Zelda game, but this one is held in very high regard by a lot of people. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on this, I did actually do a Zelda retrospective as well a while ago, where I go into a lot more detail about my history with this game and why I love it so much. 
Of course, the main things that stick out in my mind when I think about this game is the light and dark world mechanic. It's such a unique idea, and obviously Nintendo carried that forward into a lot more Zelda games in the future. But this was kind of the blueprint for what Zelda became, all the way up until Breath of the Wild kind of took it back to the NES style games. And of course, it did end up getting a fantastic sequel on the 3DS in the form of Link Between Worlds as well. So of course, I definitely recommend both of these games. And now for another fantastic game, and another one that I grew up with as a kid. I was tempted to include Donkey Kong Country 2, because I do feel like that's probably the best game in the original trilogy, but the one that I grew up with, and the one I have the most fond memories of, is the original Donkey Kong Country. I didn't get number two until quite a few years later, but the first one here, such a memorable game, and the graphics are still really good to this day. It also, the physics, and just the way the game controls, and the level layouts, it's just so good, and it is a game that I can go back to and just easily finish now without even thinking about it, really. I can just play through the entire game and just enjoy myself and just take myself back to playing it as a kid. Except when I was a kid I would get really frustrated and never be able to get past the minecart level. But these days I can do it no problem. So Donkey Kong Country, definitely one of the best platformers on the SNES, but not my favourite. Right, now we're down to the top five, and I could easily have put any of these as number one, and it was incredibly difficult to actually order these ones, but here we go, I'm going to try my best. So in at number five is Terranigma, a game that I really need to go back to and finish. I was so excited when I got this one, I'd heard incredible things about it, and it took me a long time to actually save up the money to be able to actually buy this. For those of you that don't know, and that's probably quite a few of you, especially considering this didn't actually come out in America at all. It's basically an action adventure in the Zelda style mold, but it is a lot more than that as well. It features a really interesting world where you basically start in the underworld and you go around these different towers which are kind of the different dungeons to begin the game and then you go up to the surface and then the whole world expands and depending on what you do and who you help out in the world it kind of regrows and it changes as you're going through the game. It's such a unique concept and it plays really well too. There was another game that came before this one which Yes, I haven't got to it just yet, and I'm sure some of you know what's coming up. It's another game by Quintet as well, and you know that they're one of my favourite game developers. So, Terranigma, definitely one of my favourite games on the system, and I really need to go back and finish it. Maybe I'll actually try streaming it. That might give me the motivation I need to get all the way through the game. So, go ahead and follow me on Twitch if you want to actually see me playing through Terranigma at some point in the future. I'll do that now I've mentioned it in this video. So stay tuned. Now for another Nintendo classic, which no top SNES games list should be without. For some reason, I've got the American version and I never actually owned it growing up. The first time I ever played this was actually on the Wii Virtual Console. This is Super Metroid. And even though I played it in probably around 2008 or 9, it still stood out as an incredibly well-designed game. And the world of Super Metroid, the way everything's interconnected, I honestly feel like it's still still one of the best examples of the Metroidvania genre, even to this day. And I know a lot of other people do too. You can really tell the time, the passion, the attention to detail that the designers put into this world, and how everything flows together so seamlessly. It's a game that I can go back to and play again and again and again, as I have done. I played it on the Wii, of course. I also played it when I picked up the version here on the SNES. And I also played it on the Switch more recently on the SNES as well, after I finished Metroid Dread. And I can honestly say that it holds up incredibly well, even compared to a brand new game like Metroid Dread. Although that one's fantastic too. So if you've got a SNES or if you've got a way of playing Super Metroid, then do yourselves a favour and find out why people say that this is such a good game. You will not be disappointed. Number three, and I'm sure a lot of you were actually thinking that this one would probably be number one, but there are two more games that maybe aren't quite as good technically as this one, but they do hold a lot more meaning to me personally. So in at number three, is Chrono Trigger, a truly incredible game. It may be kind of cliche to say that it's one of the best JRPGs of all time, but it gets that acclaim for a good reason. I love the pacing of this game, just like I said about Lufia, this game doesn't overstay its welcome. People think when they're thinking of Chrono Trigger that it's a massive sprawling 100 plus hour adventure, but honestly you can probably get to the end of this game in about 20 hours, which I honestly think is a perfect length for an RPG, and obviously it's got a load more different endings too, so 
you can get a lot more replay value out of this if you want. But what Square did with the 20 hours that they allotted this game, they just went off in so many different directions with this game. There's so many really interesting locations and characters and different storylines that you encounter throughout this game. And the battle system, of course, was kind of groundbreaking at the time as well, including the active time battle system, which of course went on to feature in Final Fantasy as well as the positioning of the characters in the battle arena itself, which allows you to do loads of different special moves. It's such a great, well thought out game, and obviously the music is incredible too. And I can't pass up any opportunity to show off my signed box right here. I talked about it in more detail before, I think in my favorite games of all time video, so I'll link that one down below as well. But obviously you knew this one was coming, Chrono Trigger. And for the final two games, you probably didn't see either of these come in if you don't know me personally, but in at number two is Kirby's Fun Pack. Easily my favourite platformer that Nintendo have ever made. Well, technically how, but I'm sure Nintendo had a hand in the development of this game. And if you like Smash Bros as well, a lot of its DNA can actually be traced back to this game. So that's interesting in and of itself. But the reason I love it so much is that this is the game more than anything else that I played as a kid. I can literally memorise the entire game and I even remember the first time I was so excited to unlock Milky Way Wishes, which is one of the unlockable games in this. Again, I mentioned this in my top games of all time video, so go ahead and watch that one, but what I'll say here is that every single part of this game is so memorable and it's so different as well. There's things like there's things like Revenge of Meta Knight, which is like a story-driven platforming section, and then there's things like the Great Cave Offensive, which is like a big sprawling Metroidvania treasure hunt, which is just fantastic. Honestly, there hasn't been a Kirby game since that has even come close to matching the quality and the production values and just the sense of playfulness and inventiveness that the developers had with this game. It really is the perfect Nintendo platformer. You really can't go wrong with this or the remake on the DS as well. They actually included a few extra games on that one too. So definitely recommend Kirby's Fun Pack. Don't be put off by its bright, cute and colourful graphics. There's a really, really deep, rewarding, engrossing and challenging game in here as well, which is something that's been missing from a lot of future Kirby games. And number one, of course, my favourite game, not just on the SNES, but my favourite game of all time, and I still stand by that many years later, Illusion of Time, another classic by Quintet. This game, when I first played it, and no, I didn't actually play this game when it came out, I actually played this game in college in 2008, and one day I was walking past Game Station, and I saw it in the window, and I came back the day after with the £30 that they were asking for it, and I picked the game up, went home that night, and literally played the game all night long. I didn't sleep a wink that night, I played this all night, I went to college, and I was just itching to get back home and play it again, because... I don't know what it was at the time, but something clicked with me and this game just engrossed me, just blew me away more than not just any other game, but probably any other form of entertainment ever had before or since. I don't know what it was about this game, like looking at it on a surface level, there's nothing too exciting about it. It's a kind of basic action RPG with a kind of weird story that doesn't quite make sense. But there was just something that clicked with me, and honestly, I know I've said this for many, many years now, but at some point I do plan to make a proper video about this and Quintet and explain about all their other games. So look forward to that. But for now, that's it for this video. That was my top 15 games for the Super Nintendo. Let me know down in the comments what your top 15 games are for the system, and I'll see you very soon for the next episode. Goodbye.